Hey, what's up, y'all? Tiro K here, back with another episode of For Your Future. Now, this week's show is all about vaccines. Y'all, don't forget, flu season is around the corner, and I'm just trying to look out for your health. So if you've ever wondered how you can maybe sign up for some of these coronavirus vaccine trials or just other things you need to know, I called up a doctor to give us some tips. Check it out. Hi, Dr. Hayes. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? I am doing so well, especially now that we have you to talk about vaccines. But before we dive into that, how has work been? Work has actually been so much better. It's back to normal. Uh, I'm a cardiologist. I spend a lot of my time in the ICU taking care of uh, advanced heart failure patients. So we're back to taking care of cardiology patients, although there have been a few COVID patients coming back lately. So that's a little worrisome. Oh, wow. Having to pick back up. Well, that leads me to my first question, right? Everyone's okay. Worried about the virus and wondering how they can protect themselves. And so the big talker these days is the vaccine. I've also heard and seen a few ads of folks who are signing up for trials. You know, they're like, hey, if you want to, I don't know, I guess, be that person who gets tested mm -hmm. for or tries out the whole trial um, scenario, uh, you know, what should people know about those kind of ads? And, you know, is that something that anyone can sign up for? Yeah, so uh, signing up to be in a vaccine study, it really is a personal choice, right? You have to have a certain amount of risk, uh, risk, you know, aversion or not aversion to, to be someone who goes in it. And I think that that's a personal choice. Nobody can tell you to, to be in a study or not. We're very thankful for people that are in studies. Many times it's often younger people who feel like they're not worried that it's going to be safe and they want to do something good for society. Um, but it's important that we do get a range of ages to make sure that these, these vaccines are safe. You know, I think that generally the, the early trials look at safety. And so for the most part, you know, they're giving vaccines that they believe are safe. Obviously, we don't know long term effects and, and vaccine safety and, and side effects. You know, you, there's a couple different types. There's local reactions. Action, right? So you get the shot, you get redness, you break out in a rash, your arm blows up, you have pain, you know, that's sort of mild symptoms. Then there's more systemic symptoms, like you could get a fever, uh, you could feel unwell, you could get body aches, you could feel symptomatic. And then what we worry about really is more severe reactions down the road, long-term things. And, and those are hard to evaluate. You know, you have to remember that when you're vaccinating 30,000 people, Maybe one of those people has an adverse event that has nothing to do with the vaccine, but they got the vaccine. And so now it's in the realm of possibility that the vaccine had something to do with it. And so that's really something that needs to be studied carefully before you start distributing vaccine to like billions of people. So I know there's that whole idea of, you know, we have to wait some time to see how these trials are going. Mm -hmm. But so far, do we have any idea? You know, is it does it seem like we're on a good path? Like if you could give it a grade, like where we, we don't have, it? yeah, we don't have any data on whether or not these vaccines are working. And part of it is that we did such a good job of, of um, sort of flattening the curve that we're not in peak COVID season right now. So until we really can get enough people to have COVID again, to see if the vaccine is preventing COVID, you know, again, when you do a study, you have a placebo and you have the, the person who was treated. So both people get a shot. They don't know what they got. They got placebo or vaccine. And then we see, do these people get COVID? So until they're, we get it to a certain crucial number of people who actually get infected, we can't know if the vaccine is working. So that, that takes a few months. You know, it can take six months, four months, five months. It's definitely not October, or, you know, end of October, which doesn't make right. sense because that they just started these studies in end of July, August. So we're not there yet. Well, going back to folks who, you know, are interested in signing up to be a part of these trials, you mm -hmm. know, if, if you do get a call back, let's say someone gets mm -hmm. a call back, they're like, oh, you fit the description. We'd love to have you. Thank you for your work. Uh, you know, what is some advice you would lend to someone who is looking to enroll? I think that they need to do their homework. So first of all, make sure it's a reputable company. Make sure that it's one of the big studies going on. It's not you know, something that hasn't been approved, you know, make sure that there is a uh, institutional review board that has, you know, gone through and made sure that this is a safe trial. You know, people have to do their homework and make sure that they're putting themselves, you know, in a safe place and in, with people who they can trust. So 
certainly do your do not you know just assume that everything that's being presented to you is okay you know do your work figure out who it is whether it's go online make sure it's one of the big trials that's going on you know that the government is approved i mean these are these there are real standards for these things so that's what's really important i would say are there any you know i don't know safe words or red flag <laughs> like descriptions or anything that folks can like kind of keep an eye out for like if someone's like hey come to this trial we'll pay you a million bucks i mean I right right obvious, right so they're probably yeah i don't i don't know i mean sometimes they do pay people to be in in studies i don't know yeah. currently <laughs> if they're paying they're certainly not paying a lot right, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> if it, they're promising you more than a hundred dollars i don't think it's real or like a starbucks gift card you know i don't think that's that's realistic but um you know i do i i do think you should that they should actually call and find out from the company, you know, get information, like let's say it's AstraZeneca, that they, they should go online, find the number for AstraZeneca, say, is this real? I've been presented with this vaccine. Is this one of your locations? You know, is it yes, no, and then figure it out yourself. Or if you're going to a reputable hospital or university center that you know is not a fraud. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't heard much about fraudulent vaccine trials, but you know, I understand your question is a good one. People really shouldn't just walk into something that they're not well educated about. So I know we spoke a little bit about, you know, obviously side effects. How about long term risks, if any? Do we know of, you know, any or is that is, is there something we can be looking out for in the long run? You know, it's a very unusual to have a long term effect of a vaccine, but without long term data, there'll never be any way to know. So at a certain point, you know, they just have to move ahead, you know, presuming that everything so far has been safe. But you're right. I mean, unless you have 15, 20 years of data, there's no way to know. So I will yeah. revisit you in about <laughs> years for this one. Exactly. <laughs> I guess we'll never know. Did your uh, you know, weird <laughs> medical problem that you got when you were 60 have anything to do with your 40 year old COVID vaccine? Right. Right. Oh my gosh. Seems I'm unlikely. Sure. Yeah, from what we know about the immune system, that seems unlikely. Talking about other vaccines that other people are hearing about, the flu vaccine, I know we touched on it, but mm -hmm. you know, should I get one? Is it more important this year than ever? If so, why? Obvious question there, but. <laughs> right. The flu vaccine is always important. It drives me nuts. Sometimes my parents say they didn't get the flu vaccine and I'm like, what are you doing? Your daughter's a doctor, you know, like get the flu vaccine. Funny. There's all these misconceptions about the flu vaccine. People think they can get the flu from the flu vaccine that they've, you know, don't feel good. Vaccines that are not live vaccines can promote an immune response that make you feel flu-like symptoms. So you might get a little achy for a day. You might even have a low-grade fever, but you're not getting the flu. You're just stimulating your body to make antibodies against the flu. So when and when that happens, people can feel those symptoms. So it's really you know, a misunderstanding when people think they're actually getting, like, and they'll say, like, every time I get the flu shot, I get the flu. It's like, that's right. not true, actually. Mm -hmm. But um, it does actually protect. It is really important to get. I mean, the flu kills a huge number of children and elderly patients and immunocompromised patients every year. I mean, th hundreds of thousands like, across this country and the world. So it's really important to get your flu shot. Um, and again, this is an especially important year because we don't want people to have, you know, flu and COVID, and we want potentially to have some benefit of a vaccine against the flu may have a benefit against COVID. We're not sure. So why not do it and see? Um, and look, if you take a flu vaccine and you feel a little unwell, it'll pass, take some Tylenol. If it's okay, you know, if you don't have any contraindications and, and you know, feel a little, it'll be better in two days. And, and let me tell you, if you haven't had the true influenza in the last five or six years, you're forgetting how bad it is. It is real. It's not a cold. It's not, you know, you don't need a Z pack. This is a viral illness that causes a severe respiratory infection, terrible body aches, high fever, can't get out of bed, huge amount of days missed in school and in work, very contagious. So, you know, it's really crucial to get your flu shot always. Yeah. Well, COVID regardless. For sure. Regardless of a pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Seriously. Anything else that I'm <laughs> should know? This has been so helpful, by the way. 
Yeah, no, I want people to not feel like the FDA and the drug companies are going to try to assassinate everybody <laughs> with a flu vaccine. I mean, a COVID vaccine. I just want people to try to trust still and know that, you know, we're going to take our time and do the right thing as a medical community, I hope. And, uh, and that also, you know, COVID numbers in New York City are really down right now, but it is starting to pick up. It is, you know, heading into a change in weather. More people are back, more people are getting together. There are some kids in school. And so when you see fever, cough, shortness of breath, go get tested, go to the doctor, do not avoid testing you know, do what you need to do because that's actually the most important thing is to get good medical care early, not just home and, you know, hide away. Doctor's orders. Well, thank you, doctor. I really appreciate it, you know, and thank you as an essential worker for all the work that you've been doing. Um, You know, I I can't thank you enough for taking some time to kind of chat with me and break all all this down. I'm sure you have a busy day ahead, so I don't want to keep you, but this was really fun. Thank you and informative. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Awesome. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.